January 23, 2006. A Cathay Pacific Jumbo is flying into Hong Kong at night through a thunderstorm. On board, nearly 400 passengers and crew who don't know how close they are to disaster. 100. Piloting the giant passenger jet is Australian Ben Holmes. I was missing a lot of things and the aeroplane was just getting ahead of me. So when an aeroplane gets ahead of you at eight miles a minute, it's a long way ahead of you. There is nothing wrong with the aircraft, but Ben is losing control. His reflexes and reactions destroyed by years of breathing contaminated air in his cockpit. I was becoming dangerous. I was really, really struggling in the final stages to keep the aeroplane where it should be. It is the last flight Ben will ever make, another victim of the airline industry's darkest secret. We now realise that uh, we were being seriously poisoned um, by what we were breathing and the cabin air we were breathing at work almost every day. For Ben and all pilots and passengers, the air they're exposed to inside an aircraft is pumped into the cabin through the engine. Toxic oils and other substances in the engine can leak and contaminate that cabin air supply. You're being exposed during these contaminated air events to hundreds of different chemicals. Those chemicals are carcinogens, they are hazardous chemicals, and they are going to cause harm to people. For more than a decade, former British Airways pilot Tristan Lorraine has documented dozens of other pilots and flight crew who've developed serious neurological disorders because of contaminated cockpit air. The contaminated air is affecting ability, the pilot's ability to cognitively function. And if he starts to make mistakes, then the end result will be a plane crash. We'll get everybody off the aircraft if we need to. Contaminated air or fume events occur regularly on aircraft, no matter how old or new they are. They've caused near disasters like this flight into Malmo, Sweden in 1999, where both pilots were almost unconscious on landing. And fume events are also suspected in multiple aircraft crashes, like this tragedy in Greece in 2005, where a Boeing 737 slammed into a hillside, killing all 121 passengers and crew on board. So in all of these cases where the plane has crashed and they put it down to pilot error, I would say some of those will absolutely be due to pilots being affected by contaminated air. It's seriously, seriously impacted the way I can live. When Ben Holmes began his career with Cathay Pacific, he was rated in the top echelon of pilots. But in 2002, he had his first experience of contaminated air in a Boeing 747. Becoming so physically ill, he couldn't take his shift at the controls. I was convulsing having a almost full fits. And these were coming in waves, uh, so one every 10 or 15 minutes. I, I thought I was having some sort of epileptic event. That's what it was like. It's the only way I could describe it. But if the immediate effects were shocking, the long-term impact on Ben was even worse. He began suffering more serious health problems, including nerve and brain damage. I had two really good doses of this stuff and it's brought my health to the point where I can, I can barely function. It took barely four years from his first exposure to contaminated air for this former top pilot to realise he was no longer fit to fly during that fateful night landing in Hong Kong in 2006. 
it's like a blur. I, I really don't recall it very well. I recall parts very well, but the um, I was just very sick. That's the only way I can describe it. Were you making it up? No. Were you looking no. for a payout? No, no, no. There's there's very little to gain from getting a very small payout at age 34 with two small kids um, and the rest of your life ahead of you. So no, I wasn't making it up. So how much do you miss flying? I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't think about getting back there, definitely. I miss being able to work. Um, I miss going to work. Ready? Yep. Go. Um, Ben's employer, Cafe Pacific, offered him no medical assistance and eventually fired him. His health, they said, was his problem. After many years and many blood tests, it was revealed he had high levels of toxic poisons called TCPs, components of jet engine lubricating oil that had leaked into his cabin air supply on at least two different flights. It was quite a shocking realisation to actually get those results back. Did it make you want to pick up that bit of paper with those results and take it to the airline and say, I didn't make it up, I'm sick, this is what you did to me? I sent those results to the airline um, and they just ignored them. I received no correspondence whatsoever from the airline. No correspondence and no compassion? No, no, no. They don't want to know about it. They don't want to know about it. The way air circulates in a plane is a design decision. Many say flaw made by aircraft manufacturers at the very dawn of passenger jet travel in the 1960s. It was the cheapest option then and it has never changed. Do you accept that these people are suffering? I accept that there are people suffering from some symptoms and signs, whatever the origin. Yes. Do you accept that these people are suffering because of exposure to contaminated air in the planes in which they're flying? I don't know that. I don't know. Professor Michael Bagshaw is former Chief Medical Officer for British Airways and currently a consultant to Airbus, part of an industry which for decades has consistently refused to even install monitors on aircraft to detect and warn of contaminated air aboard. Doesn't the airline have a responsibility to make sure that they're doing everything they can to make those planes safe, to keep those people safe? Yes, and I think they are doing. They're not. So... They're not monitoring the air. Because there is no way of monitoring the air at the moment, but a lot of money is being spent at the moment in trying to develop monitors. The monitors do not exist at the moment. They're in the prototype stage. Is that at the heart of it, or is it that it's easier just to put your head in the sand, pretend this isn't happening? No. Don't incur the cost and belittle the people who claim that they have been damaged? Certainly not. Think about it. Every other enclosed environment, whether it be a submarine, whether it be in a deep mine, they all have contaminated air detection systems. So why doesn't an airplane have it? I would suspect it's because they know the things would be going off so often. It's not just air crew who are at risk. 60 Minutes conducted its own tests on random flights in Australia and internationally. In the cabins of over half the aircraft we tested, we found the residue of toxic engine oils, which passengers on those flights must have inhaled. We've had six years of hell that could have been prevented. Six years ago, Samantha Sabatino and her family were on a flight to Florida when contaminated air leaked into the cabin. She, her family and dozens of other passengers on that flight have suffered long-term neurological and other health problems. You've got no doubt that what you're suffering today is through exposure to contaminated air on that flight. I have no doubt, no, not, not, not so ever. There's a lot of passengers on that plane and they've all had and all still have ongoing medical problems. All these people 
they don't know each other. The only thing in common is they're on a particular flight where there has been a fume event. Now they're all sick. Six years on, they're all sick with very similar symptoms. Yep. How do you explain that? I can't explain that. Well, could one explanation be that they were poisoned? It is, it is one expert. It, it is an association. But we don't know that they were poisoned. We don't know that. Tell I'm... me, what else could have happened to them? I don't know. Not knowing is a difficult position to maintain when even the manufacturers of the jet engine oil acknowledge its danger to health. This product contains TCP. Overexposure to TCP by breathing of oil mist may produce nervous system disorders including gastrointestinal disturbances, numbness, muscular cramps and paralysis. I accept that there are people who are unwell and these people health may well be being harmed by, um, by breathing in fumes but there is no independent scientific evidence of that at the moment. I guess the question is, what on yeah. earth are you waiting for? I mean, the oil companies yeah. continue to say that the heated product may be harmful by inhalation. They get it. Yeah. Why, don't, why don't you get it? Well, I, that, that is what they say, and I can't dis dispute what they say. The possibility that airlines and aircraft manufacturers around the world may be poisoning their air crews and passengers is terrible enough. But more terrible still is the suspicion that those same airlines and manufacturers may have known about this problem for decades and done nothing. If people believe that the airlines were, not, were, were harming people deliberately and not taking every um, precaution, people wouldn't fly with them. But we have consultants like you and excuse me if this is offensive, but very much like the tobacco industry, consultants who are paid to say, trust us, it's safe. C can I and say I find safe. that highly offensive? Yeah. Because uh, I'm afraid I do. Um, I am not paid to defend the industry. The view is that there is a conspiracy at work here. Are you part of that conspiracy? Certainly not, and I don't accept there's a comp conspiracy. 60 Minutes has obtained this internal memo from the Boeing aircraft company dated 2007. It's all about toxic air. Some of the events have been significant in that the crew reported blue smoke with defined waves in the smoke. A frustrated senior Boeing inspector is raising concerns with other Boeing executives and contractors about contaminated cockpit air which from the tone of the memo seems to be a well-recognised problem within the company. Who knows what the byproducts are in hot synthetic turbine oil? The data sheet has warnings about breathing the fumes. It ends on a chilling note that lives need to be lost before Boeing will act. Bottom line is I think we're looking for a tombstone before anyone with any horsepower is going to take an interest. That last line, it just, it, to me, it just says it all. It's, they're treating people like a, like a byproduct of the, of the industry. For Ben, this memo is proof that the industry's denial of his illness is no more than a cover-up. To see it in black and white in an internal memo from Boeing, what's that like? It, it's an admission of guilt. That's exactly what it is. What that document is saying to me is that we will keep going doing what we're doing as long as we can get away with it. While we're all vulnerable to being affected by these toxic fumes, it appears some people, like Ben, have specific sensitivity, which makes exposure for them catastrophic. There's no getting around it. If, if you're flying on an airliner, you're breathing in poisons. It's, it's that simple. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.